Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. Did you ever wonder if the creative source understood laughter? I'll tell you something that you should know. It's one of the purest forms of love that passes through the veil. Joy. Celebration. If a human could laugh all day long, they would live longer. Chemically, it's a salvation. God is a cheerful, beautiful, benevolent, glorious, and loving God. If you were to smile when you meditated, it would help you meditate. Because the smile itself says, I am pleased and I am happy with my situation and who I am. So many times the meditation comes in such a somber way. But the smile says it all. It would say, what a grand thing that I can communicate like this. You can't help but smile. Some will put their arms out and feel the energy. You can't help but smile. Because the energy feels back. Feedback is there if you want it. The tingling that you would have, sometimes the, the feelings you would have in, in your arms, your legs. Just a way of spirit saying, it's real. It's very real. I want to talk about truth in these few moments. This is not a somber message, but it is a message of importance. It's a message of good news, and yet it may seem to some that it isn't. Because it speaks of something that is beginning now. There's going to be plenty to talk about in these years. As human beings begin to evolve in a consciousness that starts to become not just multidimensional, but it starts to become more compassionate and benevolent and starts to change because of that. The major changes will happen to the old souls first. And we have said this many times. Because the old souls are the experienced ones. They're the graduates. Ah. <laughs> the old souls are the ones who know. They're the ones who feel it first. It makes sense that whatever is going to happen on the planet that is spectacularly different in the way of consciousness would start with those who were trained as shamans in the past. Dear ones, you sit here interested in metaphysics, in esoterics. I would like to tell you that the past lives that so many of you have are ones who are spiritual teachers. Some of you are spiritual teachers today. The lineage continues. Those of you who are not still feel that you know it. That at some level, you've been there and you've done that. Even if you are not one that would go along with all of the metaphysical things, there's something inside that you're comfortable with because there's no threat here. There's only love. You've actually taken it in when we say to you, there is no judgment, dear ones. Why don't you just sit and enjoy the energy of love? But we have a message about truth. Now, truth to you is quite linear. And you might say, what is the truth on the earth? Tell us. We'd like to tell you, dear, that spiritually, dear one, spiritually, you all know and participate in the truth. There's no question. The basic reality is that there is one creative source that you call God. But this God is a friendly God. 
and one who loves humanity. Almost all the belief systems will look at God and love together. And will call upon the love of God for this and that and this and that. There is an acknowledgement that's the truth. When you say what is truth? More than 85% of the planet is involved in the one truth. And you say, well, why are there so many differences? Why is there so much argument and strife? Why is there even hatred? And I will tell you, that is human. That's not the truth. The truth is one God that loves you. How you deal with it, the surroundings, the minutia, what you have decided are the rules, is human. Completely and totally. There's a good reason why every belief system is convinced that they're right. Because the miracles of God happen in every single one of their midst. If you have a synagogue, your church, whatever it is you have, healings have occurred. The love of God is felt. Miracles have happened. It doesn't matter what it is. An ashram. God is there because the loving God that created you and all the other humans are wherever you gather. And miracles are not then proprietary to one belief. It is interesting. They don't get together much <laughs> or they'd see it. But because they have miracles in their midst, they say, you see, we have the truth and the others don't. But the main truth is the one God. Humans choose then the machinations around it, the rules around it, the doctrines around it, the scriptures around it, the costumes, the protocol, the buildings. That's human truth. That's not spiritual truth. So you might say, well, what is there left then since you've identified truth? Now it gets personal. There is a truth coming, dear ones. And it involves a little battle. We told you years ago that there would be numerous battles on this planet between light and dark. Now you're seeing one right now, and we have told you many times that past 2012, literally, the dark side will be fighting for its very existence. We've told you before that whereas in the past, dark and light were not equal, you were battling the dark constantly, you had to clear the rooms, you had to use all of this energy, that that is now past because you passed this marker. That the planet is starting to vibrate differently. The mechanics of it are obvious. The magnetic grid moved. You can see it with a compass. And it moved so that your consciousness could start growing. Now there is more light than ever before. We've given you the ABCs of this and how to deal with it. But there is something else. What I want to tell you is that there is a battle coming. And it's not the one you expect. Let me ask you something. Do you know what duality is? Really? And if you think you know, let me ask you this question. If there is a light-dark balance change on the planet, do you believe at some moment it might then affect duality? The answer has to be yes. For duality is the actual, literally, the personification of the light-dark balance within an individual. Duality is defined as the battle between the corporeal self and the higher self. 
It is the balance that you then obtain. And in the past, you had to work on it. But suddenly, I'll tell you what's going on. Dear ones, there is a battle on this planet right now for your soul. And it is not what you think. It's where your soul is going to go in vibration. Duality is starting to change. And as it does, there's no more fence sitting. It starts to become black and white. Gone are the days when you can come to a meeting like this. Where you participate in the joy and the celebration of all things that are beautiful, that are spiritual, that are metaphysical. And you walk out of here and you do just the opposite. And that has always been in the way of it. For people would report to buildings, wear special clothes, do whatever they do, sing the songs. And go out and live any way they want. It is almost like they had an appointment in the box that would erase everything else they did. Not understanding that that's not the way duality works in an elegant human being. The battle is going to be where are you going to vibrate? You cannot then sit on the fence anymore. It's a personal choice. And the personal choice goes like this. Where does your consciousness settle when you're not meditating? Does it settle in joy? Does it settle in fear? Does it settle in a complaining attitude? Does it settle in a self-worth issue where you're not worth it? Will you come for just a moment or two and you'll feel the beauty and the joy of God and you leave the room and you'll say, back to the old grind, I'm not worth it. Dear old soul, anyone who's listening to this, many of you are feeling this right this minute. And I'll tell you something. The joy factor that you used to have, perhaps before 2012, is being beat up right now. And it's being beat up by you. That duality which you have carried around all of your life, it's not darkness. It is simply the duality between the corporeal self and the higher self. And it had a balance that you expected before now. And suddenly it looks at you and say, what are you going to decide? Which one is it? You cannot sit in the middle with your arms stretched and balance the two. You're going to have to choose. The battle for that soul that we speak of is where is your soul going to vibrate when you're not meditating? I'll say it again. And that is the joyful news I give you. Because many old souls are starting to realize that the self-worth issue that they felt forever is coming to a head. Are you going to wallow in this much longer? I'm, you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> are you going to wallow in this much longer? Or are you going to relax and let the beauty of your higher self take over. Why are you balancing it? Why are you so concerned about making it work a certain way? Why don't you just relax? You have got something around you called the field. And we have given you two channels so far on that. It is a physics, ex a physics extreme. It is something that wants to harmonize everything around you. Many have called it different names. We call it physics with an attitude. If left alone, this field would resonate with you, the love of God. If left alone, but you don't. 
because you're always fighting you have come out of an energy of survival and you can't let it go and you don't even know you're doing it I'll say it again when you leave the room what is your natural consciousness balance are you sorry for yourself is there a victim in there are you going to complain about the meeting or did you see the joy that is yours and the beauty of God when you were here and let it go inside where will it settle when you leave and dear ones this is the only question you should be asking yourself right now not what was taught oh it might have been interesting but how do you feel about you and the duality that you've gone through all of your life that has beat you up to a place where you walk out and you're still afraid the joyful news is that all you have to do is release all that was that is negative if you want to if you want to do a, a, a situation that is practicing you use affirmations I've told my partner there is no greater time for you to make up your own and start using them to let your body hear what you wanted to hear positive affirmations of joy and love and not a victimization not a self-worth issue not a wishing you were better you are better how is it that you can sit in such love and question yourself how can you be loved so much by God and say no no there's no right you have free choice if the love of God is so special and so beautiful enormous around you and wants to join in with you feeling better about yourself why is it that you turn your back on it and say no not today why have you invested in this and the answer is because you've done it for so long it's a habit this is a new energy the battle is here duality is going to start melding in a way melding in a way that you will not then have a situation where you have to make these choices because light is winning and the duality itself will start melding into a much lighter feel that's part of the evolved spirit of humanity the very dark and light faces you see in drama it's going to start melding your natural self when you leave the room will be one that smiles that's happy you will see the irritations as simply passing irritations they don't control your life you don't have to pass them on to others if you hear negative news you will then take it in and dismiss it you will see God in other people in other situations if you hear something that in the past was juicy gossip that you could hardly wait to pass on instead that normal self will look at it and say God bless them and their issues and send them energy and never pass it on am I getting through it's beautiful if you want it if you want it there'll be some who will leave here going I liked what he had to say but I don't know how why do you do that when I tell you to drop it why do you have to figure out how to drop it don't you understand what release is let it go you got help let it go there are those who say I've been working on fear and self-worth all my life and you're telling me just to let it go oh yeah that's what I'm telling you because before 2012 you had to work hard to keep an even balance and now you've got help the wind is at your back the field is here you don't know it unless you release it do you you're holding on to the old paradigm dear ones we gave a message not long ago in another country 
Were we actually told metaphysical workers that if you're going to deal with old energy and you're going to expect dark energy, it will come because you're going to create it. This is the power of a new human. Your expectations will then be manifest and you'll have delivered what you asked for. What are your expectations when you leave the room? Are you expecting good things in your life? Can you relax into it? Can you feel this? Relax. You just can you feel the solutions are coming? Not the worry is there. If you walk out worrying, I will tell you something. In this energy, dear ones, there's a battle. If you walk out worrying, whatever you're worrying about, you're given power to. And that is what you're going to get. It's not that new. It's just more intense. Especially. Especially with the old soul. Because you know better. Been there, done that. More experienced than any soul on the planet. You know how this energy works. You know how the planet works. It's time to drop the old soul. New soul. Is what you want. Going from an old paradigm to a new is never easy. I want you to release it. Why don't you do it right now? Why don't we do it together? I know who's here. I know what has to be released if you want to go forward. Right now, just to yourself. Dear Spirit, I release inappropriate things because of my magnificence is so good. I'm magnificent before God. Why can't I be magnificent before me? I release it. I change it now. I walk out different than I came. That's the teaching of the gurus of the age. I'm not alone. This message is being given all over the world to those who are in integrity and channeling. That's what you got to know. It's a beautiful time. There is so much power here. And it's so easy to fall into the arms of God. That is the message for today. It's simple. And yet it may be one of the hardest things you've ever done. Because, old experienced one, you may have had a thousand lifetimes with one paradigm and this one is different. So you got to train yourself. The affirmations, the sureties, the love. Catch yourself. Be benevolent with yourself. If it's an old energy paradigm and you catch it within yourself, acknowledge it for what it is and dismiss it. Your body is listening. Your consciousness is listening. More than that, if you give spirit permission to work with you, you're going to be worked with. I want you to feel right now the love that is here for humanity. It's a plea, is it not? Doesn't it sound like a plea to the old soul? Listening to this in this room, reading this later, it is a plea because you are the graduates and you can do it first. When you walk out different, I'll tell you, your vibration is felt by the dirt of the earth. Gaia knows you better. You know Gaia better. It starts a vibration change on the planet because of what you do here. When the duality starts to shift and you dismiss that old part that always was there, lack of self-worth, you change the planet itself. That's how powerful the old soul is. You carry the lineage of the planet in your Akash. Do you realize that? It's all there. All the lives you've ever lived. How many thousand individuals have you been? All of that lineage is there. And what you do right now is almost like time reverse. It changes all thousand lifetimes. Think about it. Profound, beautiful, spectacular. 
the new human. And so it is.